Muhammad's followers were kissing his bare body like they were kissing the black stone. I understand that there are differences between cultures and that what's creepy in one culture may not be creepy in another culture. Muslim scholars and apologists appeal to cultural differences quite a bit when they defend their prophet. Whenever we quote passages about Muhammad having sex with a prepubescent girl, or having sex with his slave girls, or taking the wife of his own adopted son, or allowing his followers to hire prostitutes, or sucking on the tongues and lips of little boys, or glorifying the fondling of virgins, Muslim scholars and apologists tell us that it was a different culture. So shame on us for judging. The obvious problem here is that these same scholars and apologists want to imitate Muhammad in every possible way, so Muhammad's twisted tendencies are quite relevant in discussions about whether we should take him seriously. Now, I have an open mind, so I'd be happy to carefully consider the responses of our Muslim friends when we ask them why their prophet would pull up his shirt and let another man kiss his bare body. Of course, our Muslim friends will yet again have to invent a response off the top of their heads because, as usual, they've never heard this before. Their leaders conceal these passages. Let's read a hadith, Sunan Abu Daud, 52-24. Abdur Rahman ibn Abu Layla, quoting Usaid ibn Hudayr, a man of the Ansar, said that while he was given to jesting and was talking to the people and making them laugh, the Prophet poked him under the ribs with a stick. He, Usaid, said, let me take retaliation. He, Muhammad, said, take retaliation. He, Usaid, said, you are wearing a shirt, but I am not. The Prophet then raised his shirt, and the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. Then he said, this is what I wanted, Messenger of Allah. Let's read this one more time, now that we know that Muhammad's companion Usaid was shirtless throughout this adorable little scene. Abdur Rahman ibn Abu Layla, quoting Usaid ibn Hudayr, a man of the Ansar, said that while he was given to shirtless jesting and was talking to the people with his abs in their faces and making them laugh while his pecs were popping, the Prophet poked him under his shirtless ribs with a stick. Muhammad's shirtless companion said, Let me take retaliation for you poking my shirtless body. Muhammad said, Take retaliation. You take that retaliation, Usaid. The shirtless companion said, You are wearing a shirt, but I am not. So you need to take something off, Prophet. Oh yeah, take it off. The Prophet then raised his shirt seductively, and the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he said, This is what I wanted, Messenger of Allah. I've seen you looking at me. I've noticed your hot body. <laughs> Don't be shy. You can't imagine how long I've wanted this. This sounds like the beginning of an ISIS gay porn film. The response that our Muslim friends will invent off the top of their heads, because they've never heard this before since their leaders hide it from them, will go something like, Oh, you know, it's perfectly normal to have a man pull up his shirt so you can smooch his milky white flesh while you embrace him and tell him how much you've been wanting this. I know that there are places like France where men will kiss other men, usually on the cheek, and in Bible times it was perfectly normal for men to greet each other with a kiss. But kissing a dude's bare naked torso while embracing him and telling him how much you've been wanting it? Men, can you imagine hanging out with your friends and you end up kissing each other's bodies? So for me, that would be like me hanging out with John McRae and Vocab Malone, and Vocab's acting like an idiot with his shirt off, and I jab him with a stick, and he says he wants to jab me back, but he tells me I have to take my shirt off too, and then he ends up smooching the side of my body while embracing me and saying, Oh, I've been wanting this, David. That would be 
one of the most disgusting scenarios in the history of humanity, and yet it's what we find Muhammad, the perfect moral example for all mankind, doing with his followers. Now, you Muslims who are going to tell me that this is perfectly normal behavior in Islam, nothing creepy whatsoever, do you seriously think this is normal? Or are you just saying it's normal because you found out while watching this video that your prophet did it? and you've been trained to automatically defend all the creepy stuff that your fake prophet did. If you walked in and found your favorite Muslim apologist with his shirt off, kissing the side of another Muslim apologist who's got his shirt pulled up, you wouldn't find that at all creepy? If video footage emerged of Ali Dawa with his shirt off, smooching the side of Muhammad Hijab with his shirt pulled up, and you hear Ali Dawa saying, Oh, we've been wanting this Muhammad hijab, and we're proud of that. You're telling me that would be perfectly normal? Is that the sort of thing you'd like to watch? You know what? We'll be watching. We'll be watching. If you got to meet Zakir Naik at his house, and you took your shirt off to entertain him, and he jabbed you in your ribs with a stick, and you said, Oh, doctor, Islam says I get retaliation. And he said, Brother, make a good point. And you said, But it's not fair because you've got your shirt on. And he said, Brother, make a good point. And pulls his shirt up. And you put your arms around him and start kissing him up and down his side while telling him how long you've been wanting to do that. Would that be totally normal to you? After all, Zakir Naik would just be imitating his fake prophet. Now, if this were the only creepy hadith about Muhammad, we'd probably let this slide. But since we're talking about the same guy who used to walk around covered in semen, the same guy who literally proposed marriage to a baby, the same guy who told his followers to guarantee what's between their legs to him in exchange for paradise, we have to take this hadith as more confirmation that this guy was a sick, twisted, freaky, perverted fraud. This is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?